Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Grosley Town Council employs a series of measures to improve conditions for coconut vendors operating in Rodney Bay. St. Lucia's vulnerability to climate change has been highlighted in a special assessment conducted by the UN. Author and advocate Lovely Sheridan launches an international anti-bullying campaign. All that plus the latest in youth development sports and the NTN Wapo Aquayo. The Grosley Town Council has employed a series of measures directed at helping to improve conditions for coconut vendors operating in the Rodney Bay area. The decision dovetails efforts by the Caribbean Agriculture Research and Development Institute, CARDI, to create a more sustainable coconut sector. Here's Janelle Norville. Following a meeting with stakeholders including the Grosley Constituency Council, Coconut Vendors, Department of Health and Wellness, and the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, a decision was taken to relocate the coconut vendors. According to Mayor of Grosley Constituency Council, James Edwin, such a decision was taken into consideration due to a number of factors, including the safety hazard the practice posed to members of the public. It's posing a, a serious challenge as far as safety, both to pedestrians, um, the coconut vendors, motorists, and also it has not been conducted in the most hygienic environment. Um, we realize that the, the, the vendors, they spend a lot of time out there, sometimes 14, 16 hours. And we know there's no set washroom facility provided for them. So one must ask the question, where do they relieve themselves throughout the day and how hygienic it is providing the coconut water to the general public? So um, for the past year, um, year or so, we've, we've had discussions with the coconut vendors. We've brought them in. Um, at that meeting, we had representatives from the Ministry of Health. We had representatives from physical planning. We had representatives from infrastructure and Bureau of Standards. And we explained to them that the current location, we cannot continue operating like that. Edwin is calling on the vendors to approach the situation with an opened mind. He explained that he too is a consumer of the product and despite location, he will come to the vending area to purchase. The intention, he added, is not to prevent the vending but to enhance it as vendors earn a livelihood and the public benefit from the service. The mayor indicated that some $20,000 was raised and spent to ready the new location. Among other things, a facility attendant was hired and the council will be ensuring the upkeep of the facility. First on the relocation and then to pro provide them with some restroom facility. Hence the reason why this location was identified. Um, since then, we've graded the area, we've provided a, a little bypass we had consultation with the Ministry of Infrastructure and the police as to the traffic management. They've asked us to install entry and no entry sign and exit sign that we've done. And we've also built washroom facilities for them. Um, we've provided male and female toilets for them, as you could see in the, back, in the background. And we are hoping that they, they would come to their senses and realize that Coconut water, people need coconut water. Regardless where you are, if they need the coconut water, they will come and get it. Somehow they seem to think that the only place they can operate is between the Rodney Bay Junction and Grozile. But, uh, but, but that is a false argument. People on their way from, to and from work, if they need coconut water, they will stop and, and purchase it. The decision falls in line with regional efforts at enhancing the coconut sector. The Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CARDI, is spearheading a Caribbean coconut industry development project, a four-year initiative in partnership with the International Trade Center. It is aimed at improving income and employment opportunities, food security, and overall competitiveness of the Caribbean coconut sector. It also seeks to address all issues along the value chain from production to manufacturing of coconut water, oils, and soap. In St. Lucia, Cardi has been working with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the standards are adhered to in the various processes. St. Lucia's vulnerability to climate change has been highlighted in a special assessment spearheaded by the United Nations. Speaking at the Multi-Hazard Early Warning System opening ceremony held earlier this month, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney indicated that the United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS, 
recently concluded an assessment of the impact of climate change on the island. A number of areas were highlighted as vulnerable, particularly in the face of rising sea levels. If there's a three-foot rise in the water levels, what does the country look like? So VG becomes an island. So where Ganters is, the water will break through. Cul-de-sac will become a lake. And there are other areas where we have valleys in which those also will become lakes. So now, if you believe in the science, you know what you're going to have to invest. So that's the resilience. That's saying, okay, should we now start reclaiming some of VG's beach and raising that level of that beach? And how far out should we go in order to be able to protect the airport? Should we dredge cul-de-sac now and create a large dam reservoir so that when the water comes down, it actually captures it and we have the ability like the, 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 the dam, uh, the, the uh, Sir John Dam, to create an overflow. It was also explained that the government would now have to weigh its options and decide what is best for the country in the long run. Prime Minister Shastney noted that while the decision may hold no immediate economic benefits for the country, they would ensure the safety of the people and the infrastructure of St. Lucia. And start expecting and accepting that that's the direction that we're going to go in. Identifying the locations in which we're going to have to start moving people now. Because it's inevitable that that's going to happen. And it's going to be cheaper dealing with it with time on our side, because the global warming is not something that's going to happen tomorrow. It's not all of a sudden going to rush on you, but it's, it's, it's a gradual thing that's taking place. And, and we think that within the next 10 years, it, it's inevitable that the sea level is going to rise. And, and let us now start putting that mechanism in place to deal and confront with that. And that was Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Shastney. The Honorable Su Jia Chaiyun, President of the Legislative Yuan of the Republic of China, Taiwan, leading a 10-member delegation, is scheduled to visit St. Lucia from the 21st to the 24th of February 2019 as Special Envoy for Her Excellency President Tsai Ling Wen and participate in the celebrations of the 40th anniversary of the independence of St. Lucia. During this trip, Special Envoy Su and his delegation will meet with the Honorable Prime Minister Alan Shastney, the Honorable Senate President Janine Jerodi McIntyre, the Honorable House Speaker Andy Daniel, and the Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, the Minister with the, with the Responsibility for External Affairs, and other St. Lucian dignitaries. Special Envoy Su will also attend the groundbreaking ceremony for the Hironara International Airport Redevelopment Project, which will be financed by a loan from the Export Import Bank of Taiwan. Also in this special envoy delegation are three prominent business leaders who will explore investment and trade opportunities between Taiwan and St. Lucia during this trip. Anti-bullying author and youth advocate Lovely Sheridan has launched her international Buddy Bench campaign. The campaign endorsed by the Ministries of Education and Infrastructure highlights the consequences of bullying. The official launch took place at the Carmen Rennie Memorial School. Bullying is a pervasive global issue which affects children in different ways, including death by suicide. Most acts of bullying start at an early age when children are unable to understand the effects and consequences of their actions. It is for this reason that St. Lucian anti-bullying author and youth advocate, Lovely Sheridan, has brought the Buddy Bench campaign to St. Lucia, one that is endorsed by the Ministries of Education and Infrastructure. Be a Buddy, Not a Bully is a successful U.S. national anti-bullying campaign designed by Sheridan based on her program, Buddy Ambassadors, and book, Be a Buddy, Not a Bully. The official launch of the program took place at the Carmen Rene Memorial School on Monday. Play forms an integral part of our values and beliefs as a school. And I must commend Mrs. Sheridan for her passion in promoting this awareness because it encourages our students to be their brother's keeper. 
to be their best selves. The District 2 Education Officer, Martha Foster, applauded Sheridan for promoting a mindset and spirit of peace towards making the world a better place one buddy bench at a time. The notion of being a buddy and not a bully is such a powerful one that once ingrained in our minds will propel action against such behavior, aimed at a total eradication of cases of bullying, especially among the youth. Lovely Sheridan explained what a buddy bench is. This is a bench that not everybody gets included. Not everybody gets the friend to play with like we saw in the skit, right? Sometimes you are left out. Sometimes you're feeling alone. Sometimes you don't have a friend. Sometimes you need to talk to someone and you don't have anybody and you don't know how to, to say that, right? Well, this, this is what this bench is about. We are going to put this bench on your playground and when you need a friend, when you're feeling left out, when you're feeling alone, you're gonna come sit on the bench and a buddy is gonna come up and say, are you okay? The program, which targets children ages 4 to 10, seeks to help raise awareness and end bullying, as well as promote friendliness and inclusiveness in schools. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there is hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. Another round of matches were completed as the 2019 Mass United Insurance 50 over under 19 schools cricket tournament continued on Monday. Wins were recorded for Corinth Secondary over Vidbutai Secondary, Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary over Trizel Secondary, and Miku Secondary over John Odlam Memorial. At the Grosley playing field, Corin Secondary proved too much for Vidbutai, defeating them by 201 runs. Corin Secondary batting first made 248 for 8 in the allocated 41 overs, with opening batsman Captain Lee Solomon and Daniel Bissett sharing in an impressive opening partnership of 175. Solomon made a patient 70 with 8 fours, and Bissett got 51 with 5 fours. Bowling for Vidbutai Secondary, Rajan Alphonse bagged 2 for 21, McKay Alfred 2 for 28, Hanik Hippolyt 2 for 45, and Avalina Scalander 2 for 54. In reply, Corinth Secondary's seam bowlers led by McKay Nelson with a 5 wicket haul, 5 for 8 in 5 overs, dismissed Vidbutai Secondary for only 47 in 16 overs. Shahid Roberts had 2 wickets for no runs. Corinth winning again by a whopping 201 runs. At the PI playing field, Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary completed a tense two wicket victory over Trizel Secondary. Trizel Secondary batting first in a game reduced to 40 overs a side was dismissed for 88 in 22.2 overs, with Curvy Roseman 29, the only batsman to reach double figures. Bowling for Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary, Tyrone Theodore collected 4 for 15, Urias Constantine 2 for 15 in 5 overs, and Kaj Roberts. 2 for 29 in 5 overs. Chasing a victory target of 89, Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary finished on 89 for 8 in 26.4 overs, with Chad Marcel making 14 and Tyrone Theodore 11 not out. The main wicket takers for Strazel Secondary were Sky Laffey with 3 for 21 and Darville Edwards 2 for 24 in 8 overs. At the Wend playing field in Monipo, Meku Secondary completed a comfortable 81-run victory over John Odlam Memorial. Meku Secondary batting first was dismissed for 136 in 22.5 overs with Marklin Estefan top scoring of 23. Bowling for John Odlam Memorial, Deshaun Louis bagging 4 for 27 in 5.2 overs and Scott William 
2 for 38 in 6.4 overs. In response, John Allen Memorial dismissed for 55 in 17.1 overs, with Chad William making 16 and Yvonne Mitchell 14. Bowling for Miku Secondary, Brent Edward 4 for 14 and Jerlyn Justin 2 for 12. They were the main destroyers. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, had saluted the nation's top athletes and encouraged them to continue striving for excellence. Minister Estefan's remarks came at the weekend during the National Sports Awards Ceremony. Tonight's Sports Awards serve as a clear demonstration of our St. Lucia's highest honor and respect for our sporting champions and legends. It also indicates government's total passion and commitment to the advancement and growth of sports and recreation. Young sports leaders in St. Lucia will get an opportunity for further development when the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports puts on its first training session for 2019. Nairon Talium is a Program Development Officer in the Ministry. The training starts on the um, 25th of February. It's four days for the local tutors, so it's from the 25th to the 20th, 28th of, of February. Um, what happens is that the first day we come in, we, we introduce ourselves, we, we have that kind of icebreaker, and then we go into how do you facilitate young persons? You know, how do you pass on the knowledge to young persons? Because the idea is that it's all about facilitation. It's, the whole idea is, is learning by doing. That's the concept we're using, and it's youth friendly. Learning by do, doing, and then the, that our local tutors now have to understand that it's not about teaching. Because you know, you could go in the classroom and teach, but it's about facilitating the, the process so that you make it um, fun and interactive for the young people. And the idea is that is um, it's fun activity, fun games to pass on the um, the skills such as um, group dynamics, teamwork, um, budgeting, financial management, and just coping skills as well. A reminder for all of you interested in getting involved in the Young Sports Leaders Program that you can register for the training online via the Ministry's Facebook page or visit the offices of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Shriki Building, Upper Miku Street. That's all from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The UK's Commonwealth Envoy, Mr. Philip Parham, will visit St. Lucia from the 21st to the 22nd of February 2019 to represent the British government at the independent celebrations. Mr. Parham was appointed by Prime Minister Theresa May as the UK Commonwealth Envoy in June of 2018 and represents the UK on the Commonwealth's Board of Governors. While in St. Lucia, Mr. Parham will attend the independence activities on the 22nd of February. In addition to meetings with government ministers, he will meet with Johannan Dujo of Algas Organics to congratulate him on his selection as a finalist for Commonwealth Young Person of the Year 2019. Mr. Parham is also looking forward to having lunch with Commonwealth Points of Light winners, Commonwealth Scholars and Queen's Young Leaders. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Wapon or Quayol. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should a reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Wapon or Creole with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur, Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle créole, posé au Primus Hutchinson. Le maître fait, j'arrive dans une décision pour replacer les machines qu'on a qui étaient à opérer en Wet Rodney Bay, 
Ça, c'est après une grande discussion entre le concept de Ville-Gosilé, département de santé, bureau qui reste comme ça pour régler l'opération de ménagement de manière PEP, qui vend des produits et qui business, ça c'est Bureau Standards, et qui est machin Selon le maire pour le concept de Ville-Gosilé, James Edwin, considération de décision, c'est un résultat de plusieurs affectements pour la santé publique. Mais, mais Gozile a ajouté que l'opération de ces là qui était qu'à poser un problème santé qui est très sérieux et qu'on si, a l'occasion de qui a déglisé le l'environnement et d'une faire bon appel pour ces machines qu'on consacre à approcher cette situation. Et bien, il y a beaucoup de Il a expliqué que lui-même qui a servi pour lui et qui a changement pour l'autre placement là pour le conduire business là. Pas qu'à affecter lui pour continuer à acheter hot ces machines coco. Il a aussi expliqué attention c'est pour empêcher ces machines coco à accumuler et qu'à continuer business yo à l'autre façon. Mais pour établir yon mer façon pour opérer et pour les membres publics expérimenter ces business hot business à la même bien expérimenter ces bénéfices hot de ces business à la même. Monsieur Edwin a annoncé qui la jani 20 000 dollars place pour préparer établissement nouveau sala. Il dit la kaini aussi yon officier qui ka responsable pour régler opération facilité. Pendant qu'on s'est la même ka responsable pour voir qui se facilité à rester à nord. Tout arrangement sala ka fait a effort pour renforcer le secteur coco en pays comme institut pour recherche et développement agricole à Kaoibla, ça c'est Kadi. Jaka conduit un projet de développement industrie coco à Caribla. Ça supposé faire possible pour éprouver à son occasion pour employement, sécurité des marchés et pour opération généralement du secteur business coco à Caribla. Une chose que la adressé production de l'eau coco, l'huile coco et savon des coco. Placement nouveau pour ces machines coco à tuer ça là, qui sorti Rodney B. Et pour entrer un vieux établissement d'ailleurs, ça c'est un bras de rage. Il y a un projet qui est ministère de santé est implémenté pour te faire assessment en façon pour improuver les services de santé à cette ci à tuer en opération officiellement recettement. Le système de santé ça là, c'est principalement pour aider à improuver les services de santé pour tout le peuple cette ci Le projet a embrassé plusieurs aspects des services de santé façon pour éprouver à sa meilleure manière pour délivrer ces services là. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour la santé, honorable Myria Isaac, déclare qu'il est plein comme projet à créer et adresser services de santé en toute commune ville. Selon Mme Isaac, le projet système de santé Hot Bank Mondial a une bonne position pour aider à augmenter les services de santé à cette ci qui aussi a facilité l'implémentation de l'assurance nationale de santé PIA. Madame le ministre de la Santé a aussi pour que cela soit bien capable de délivrer un degré de service pour la population de cette ici. Et il a ajouté que l'initiative là a réduit à ce poste que le service de santé a posé à ce nouveau officier qui est officier qui est ça pour plan de, des affaires de santé, Lauren James, fait appel pour tout ce qui concerne pour renforcer le commitment et l'effort pour établir une transformation. En secteur santé cette ci C'est le James, au jeu ça là, qui a facilité pour le programme assurance santé pour tirer des degrés d'assistance pour la population en pays en ligne de divers bénéfices, aussi de meilleure manière pour traiter les gens qui sont malades et en quelle façon le Health Center en pays capable pour tirer plus de meilleurs services santé. C'est Banque mondiale qui a financé le projet à hauteur de 20 millions de dollars américains. Département qui est responsabilité pour entretenir le développement en l'environnement, qui a atelier pour adresser plan d'adaptation pour le programme de développement pour adresser ces plans. Ça là. qui est responsabilité pour le développement, ça là, ça c'est Mme Don Pierre Nathaniel, explique qui y a un plan d'action pour le programme, ça là, qui a cherché façon pour trouver des solutions pour le changement des climats de la terre. Selon Mme Nathaniel, le programme des actions, c'est principalement une initiative pour Dislandé, commencé l'année passée, ça c'est 2008 pour 2028. Il remarque que ça c'est pour bâtir résilience contre le changement climat. 
officier a ajouté aussi que y a développé plan des actions pour adresser agriculture dans la fête de l'eau avec la pêche aussi ressources naturelles cette éducation en parmi l'autre Nathaniel déclare que diverses agences qui engagées dans l'activité sala qui travaillent sur un plan de communication pour le changement du climat. Alors, il a annoncé que le cabinet de gouvernement a approuvé le programme sala et a aussi une bonne recommandation pour l'effort qu'il a fait pour abattre le changement du climat en pays. Selon Mme Nathaniel, le gouvernement a cru que le secteur privé aussi ne pourrait jouer un rôle qui est très important en affaire pour abattre le changement du climat. Aujourd'hui, comme nous avons continué pour défricher l'adresse du Premier ministre Alain Chasney pour le peuple pour l'année 2019, nous avons continué, comme nous avons promis, à ce projet d'investissement. Le Premier ministre a parlé du projet pour bâtir le système de l'eau en grâce et effort. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré que le gouvernement savent que pour plusieurs années, le public a capé pour le gouvernement y la vie pour nettoyer dans de l'eau John Compton à tête chez même Et pas rien qui était déjà fait. Le Premier ministre a annoncé qu'en mois de mai l'année passée, le gouvernement a commencé à préparer la phase programme de réhabilitation de John Compton. Alors, à John Compton, grâce à Grieffort et Denry, l'administration a dépensé 168 millions de dollars en secteur de l'OPIA. Mais, selon le Premier ministre, ça ne pas, pas, ça pas le dit, le gouvernement a négligé la façade de notre pays. Le Premier ministre Chasse a déclaré que nous tous avons changé la manière de vivre la ville qui est tellement vivant et que c'était une ville qui était plus avancée en affaires avancé en affaire business. Mais à présent, la ville qui est plus avancé en une ville qui est plus avancé seulement qu'habiter, particulièrement les souhaits. Toutes ces activités, les souhaits qui ont encouragé les gens pour visiter la ville, j'ai disparu. Récemment, Magasin et club des amusements, belle tickleté, et tout le monde qui est venu pour un petit marché au Liban, Villa, les souhaits, pour garder ça qui est en ce magasin, tout ça, j'ai disparu. Premier ministre Chasné dit que le gouvernement est venu pour mettre un changement en place pour vivre, placer Castri côté ITE avant, et plus avancé aussi, et dit Castri ni briser un développement nouveau. Premier ministre la Kakwe qui c'est Kaila qui est bâti après grandifier 70 l'année qui passait, ni briser, bruit placé, et la ni autant établissement qui abandonne en ville là. Il dit aussi, à pile de yo, pas en bonne condition, pièce de bonnement, et si on risque de santé, et juste sa gouvernement qui a occupé, alors, il est nécessaire pour replacer ces établissements là, et vivre et hosté ville castrui dans des gouets pour entretenir activité économique et pour procurer plus de travail pour le peuple. Ici. Et mesdames et messieurs, ça c'est côté nous en trois bouts de nouvelles. Je vous remercie autant pour garder mon cabot et l'invitation. Vous jouez depuis moi encore. Les gars, vous êtes trois l'autre nouvelle à Créole. Merci au Peel Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Moderate to brisk easterly winds and above normal seas will continue around the eastern Caribbean over the next few days. Patches of low-level clouds drifting with the wind flow will produce some scattered showers over the region during the next 24 hours. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and above normal seas. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.39 p.m. and will be low at 10.02 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 4.46 p.m. and will be low at 11.29 p.m. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves and swells 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6.25 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.